Hi, my name is Corey, and I will be your Prep Scholar Math instructor today as we learn about a very important topic in arithmetic, exponents and roots. For this lesson, we will first review what bases and exponents are. Next, we will discuss three commonly used exponents that we might encounter on test day, 0, 1, and 2. Then, we will talk about negative exponents, and after that, we'll review properties of odd and even exponents when we have negative bases. Then we will discuss square roots and higher order roots. And finally, we'll conclude with rules of roots and how we can apply them to math problems. Let's begin. I'm sure we've all heard of exponents before, but what exactly are they? Terms with exponents in them are called exponential terms. They will have a base and an exponent associated with them. The exponential term here is read as 2 to the third power, or 2 raised to the power of 3. Exponents are just a shorthand way of telling someone that we want to multiply the base by itself a certain number of times. The exponential term shown here tells us that we want to multiply the number 2 by itself three times giving us 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 8. Let's keep these facts about exponents in mind as we learn more about exponents and roots. There are three exponents that come up pretty often, so let's discuss them in more detail. First, we have the exponent 0. 0 exponents have the property that any number raised to the power of 0 is 0. There is one exception, however which is that 0 raised to the power of 0 is undefined. So pretty much any time we see something raised to the power of 0, we just replace the entire term with the value 1. Next we have the exponent 1. Exponential terms with an exponent of 1 are equal to the base. As an example, 5 raised to the power of 1 is equal to 5 or 0 raised to the power of 1 is equal to 0. This even holds for negative numbers, so negative 3 raised to the power of 1 is equal to negative 3. Finally, we have the exponent 2. Exponential terms with an exponent of 2 are often referred to as squaring a number or a number squared. For example, the exponential term 3 to the power of 2 can also be read as 3 squared. This is important because some math questions will be written in a way that will test if we know that the square of a number is equivalent to raising that number to the power of 2. Not only can we have positive exponents, but they can be negative as well. An example of a negative exponent is shown here. So what do negative exponents mean anyway? For example, here, we can't really multiply 2 by itself negative 3 times. That doesn't even make any sense. Clearly, it would be nice if we could find a way to change negative exponents into positive exponents. That way, we'll be able to think about them more clearly. And thus was born the negative exponent rule. The negative exponent rule can be applied in one of two ways. First, we can use it to move numbers from the numerator to the denominator of a fraction. For example here, let's try to simplify 2 to the power of negative 3. Applying the negative exponent rule, we can move the exponential term from the numerator to the denominator and change the exponent to positive. So here we see that 2 to the negative 3 has the same value as 1 eighth. We can also do the reverse using the negative exponent rule to move exponents from the denominator to the numerator. For example, let's simplify 1 divided by 2 to the power of negative 3. Applying the negative exponent rule, we can move the exponential term from the denominator to the numerator and change the exponent to positive. So here we can see that 1 divided by 2 to the negative 3 has the same value as 8. Right here is a shorthand way to express the negative exponent rule in math terms. Basically, it just tells us to switch the exponential term from the numerator to the denominator or vice versa. 
and we can make the exponent positive. Another special property of exponents that we're likely to run into on test day is the relationship between the odd even status of an exponent for exponential terms with negative bases. The important rule to remember here is that negative bases raised to odd exponents will always be negative, and negative bases raised to even exponents will always be positive. For example, negative 2 raised to the power of 2 gives us the positive number 4. But negative 2 raised to the power of 3 gives us negative 8 as a result. A common way to test this is to give us two exponential terms for comparison, both with negative bases, but one of them has an odd exponent and the other will have an even exponent. So here, it, here we would be tested to see if we know that any negative number raised to an even exponent must be greater than any negative number raised to an odd exponent. Definitely worth committing to memory. Next we have square roots and higher order roots. Square roots are the opposite of squaring a number. For example, the square of the number 2 is 4 and the square root of the number 4 is 2. Square roots of positive numbers will always have two values. For example, while the square root of 4 can be 2, since 2 times 2 is equal to 4, the square root of 4 can also be negative 2, since negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4. A very common mistake on test day is to forget that square roots of positive numbers can be either negative or positive, so let's not forget this. We can also have higher order roots. Higher order roots are expressed with a number superscripted to the left of the radical sign, or as a fractional exponent. Here we can see that the cubic root of 8 can be written as 8 raised to the 1 3rd power, which is equal to 2. Next we have four main rules of exponents that we might run into on test day. And we will go over these as rules of the roots. The first rule is that the square of the square root of a positive number is that number itself. So for example, the square of the square root of 3 is 3. The next rule is that the square root of the square of a number is that number itself. So for example, the square root of the square of 3 is also 3. These first two rules are inverse operations of each other, meaning that they cancel each other out. So whenever we see the exponent 2 and a square root together, we can ignore both of those operations. The next rule is that radicals can be multiplied together. So for example, the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 3 gives us the square root of 2 times 3, or the square root of 6. The final rule of roots is that we can add or subtract terms that have the same value underneath the radical sign. So for example, 3 times the square root of x plus 5 times the square root of x minus 2 times the square root of x is equal to 6 times the square root of x, since 3 plus 5 minus 2 is equal to 6. Let's do a recap of our exponents and roots lesson. First, we learned that exponential terms have a base and an exponent, with the exponent written as a superscript. We also learned about three important exponents. If the exponent is 0, then the exponential term has a value of 1. If the exponent is 1, then the exponential term has a value of the base. We also learned that when the exponent is 2, we call that squaring a number. We mastered how to change negative exponents into positive exponents by moving the exponential term from the numerator to the denominator or vice versa. We also learned to pay attention to the odd-even status of exponents, 
when the base of an exponential term is negative. Next we learned that the square root of a number will have two numbers with identical magnitudes but opposite signs. Also, higher order roots of numbers can be represented by placing the order of the root to the left of the radical sign or by using fractional exponents. And finally, we learn four different properties of roots. An exponent of two and a square root cancel each other out. It doesn't matter which order we use them in. We also learned that we can multiply together numbers under radical signs, and also that we can add or subtract numbers with the same exact number or expression under a radical sign. Feel free to review this lesson again anytime, and Prep Scholar is rooting for you to succeed on test day.